What's up guys, this episode we're diving into using Tailwind CSS in Rails. But first, if you aren't familiar with this, I want to introduce it to you briefly. This is a framework for building your own front ends. You can use it to build anything you could possibly imagine. You don't have to use any of the components like Bootstrap gives you. Because this framework gives you utilities only. It doesn't give you buttons, it doesn't give you cards, it doesn't give you alerts doesn't give you modals or any of those designs. They are completely up to you to build out, which is kind of awesome. So this gives you um, a bunch of little classes, a ton of little classes that you can use to tweak your UI to exactly how it should look. You can fine tweak the padding and all that stuff by writing your CSS classes, not your uh, actual CSS. So this is really neat. It gives you all of these tools to give you the rough implementation. And then they also give you um, responsive CSS classes. For example, this one says, well, it's horizontal normally, but if we shrink it down, we want the items in there to be vertical, so that's really cool. It gives you even responsive classes so you don't have to fiddle with media queries or any of that. You've got this taken care of for you. And then you can extract these out into say, well, this is how a card of this style should work. And you have the ability to then go pull that out and build your own components like you would see normally in Bootstrap. So this one, for example, shows a button but a button doesn't exist here in Tailwind. And so to build a button, we have to set a background and a hover state and text white and font bold and padding and rounded corners. And so we can extract that out by saying, well, we want to make reasonable buttons. All our buttons should have font bold, padding and rounded corners. And then the blue ones should have a background of blue and text is white and then when you hover over it it should be darker blue and so you can use this to prototype your UI and then extract it out to build your own UI kit which is really awesome when you're building an application or anything like that that needs a really custom UI especially when you take something from your designers PSD and you're trying to build it out that can be very time consuming to do but with Tailwind you can eyeball it and build a very similar version of it very quickly so it's really awesome and if you want to see how to do that um, Adam Wathan one of the guys building Tailwind has several videos on his YouTube channel um, where he rebuilds the Coinbase dashboard and Laravel IO and those sites are incredibly awesome to watch he builds out pretty much an exact copy of the Coinbase dashboard in two hours and it's responsive and he even gets the little nuances down right of the drop down avatar shows up in one state but the name shows up in the other and there's opacity on this carrot and all these other things it's awesome to watch so i want to show you how to use this in rails and we're going to use that using webpacker so let's create a new application to use tailwind css now i'm going to create a new application you can apply this to an existing one if you add the webpacker gem and install it but because we're going to create a new application. Let's call it Tailwindy. We're gonna say webpack, uh, dash dash webpack, and that's going to make sure that webpacker gets installed. Um, and you will see that in this uh, setup because it's going to then run yarn at the end after it's created your application and then install a couple things. So that installs Webpacker and everything for us. If you have an existing application, go read the Webpacker readme, install Webpacker in your application, um, and then that is it. You are up to date to where we are and you can go follow the rest of this from there. So let's go into our application and we mean to then yarn add Tailwind CSS. This is going to add the dependency and install it from npm. We're going to use the um, node modules file that it ships with, the .bin, Tailwind's uh, executable. We're going to initialize, uh, and actually before we do this, let's make a directory called app JavaScript, which is where the Webpacker stuff goes. Let's create a CSS folder in there, and then we'll create node modules uh, bin tailwind init and we're gonna do app JavaScript CSS um, tailwind.js and that's going to basically set up our tailwind um, install 
and configuration into that folder. So that is where our CSS is going to live for Tailwind. Now before we get along too far, I wanna point out that that file that we copied over from Tailwind's node module uh, gets installed to our Rails app and you have free reign to go and modify this. This is something that you should be aware of because you can go dive into here and change the colors. If you would like black to actually be black, um, you can go ahead and modify that to be zero, zero, zero. So all of these colors, the rounded uh, screen sizes, fonts, the rounding and text sizes and all of that stuff are configurable in here. It is really awesome what you have available. So take a look at all of that. This is kind of what's going to define what CSS classes will be generated and available to you when you're building out your styles. So our application JS file here in PAX is where we're going to be importing this um, CSS. But first we need to build our own style sheet. So what we're going to do is go back to the Tailwind CSS guide. Now they have a Tailwind uh, CSS example style sheet in the installation section. So we're gonna grab that. Um, this is basically going to give us a little template of how we can go start writing our styles. So what we're going to do is create that full file and set it as app JavaScript CSS application dot CSS. Um, and so we're going to have that here and we'll paste that in and that's going to basically say Tailwind give us all of our default stuff and all of our utilities and then we can go and build out our own components like you saw with the button example. Now our JavaScript application JS is actually going to import a CSS file which would be a little tricky or a little weird to think about but because Tailwind is more like a JavaScript CSS generator in a sense it's generating all this CSS for us. So we can go and say, we want to import CSS application.css in our application.js file. And we want to import this, mainly the style sheet into our application HTML ERB. So we want our JavaScript pack tag, and more importantly, the style sheet pack tag here so that we can get access to the compiled style sheet. So we will have that, it will import this, which will go over here, and then once it hits the at tailwind, we need to have it trigger the tailwind.js, basically. So what we have to do is go and modify our post CSS uh, YAML file. So there's a configuration file with, that Webpacker comes with that you probably didn't know about, called uh, .postcssrc.yaml. And this file is going to be where we define Tailwind CSS and we need to point it to that app JavaScript CSS Tailwind.js file that we copied over from Tailwind's node module. So basically this is gonna set it up so the at Tailwind module can be imported in the CSS and we can access all of the Tailwind stuff. And then we can go run Let's generate a scaffold for user with name so that we can set this up and then have some views to look at. So I'm gonna run this and then set up the routes file so that we have root to the user's index. And one thing to remember to remove is when you generate a scaffold, you wanna remove app assets, style sheet, scaffold, CSS, cause that adds these weird colors to the links and some default styles that we don't want because we're gonna be using Tailwind for everything. So let's take a look at removing that. And uh, if everything is set up correctly, we should be able to start our Rails server. And one thing you'll notice right away is that when you go to the form, there is a very, very blank slate here. And that's because Tailwind normalizes the CSS. So every browser by default has basic styles implemented. They choose maybe serif fonts or some do sans serif or whatever. And the normalize actually makes sure that all of those are equal at the beginning. So your Internet Explorer, or Chrome, or Firefox all look exactly the same by default. And that's what your normalize is going to do so that all of your UIs look the same once you implement these styles on top. So we can go and tweak our button here because that's a great, easy example for us to do. Um, we can just do the same thing as we saw in the example before. Or we can do like background indigo. Um, where we'll have a purple one, we'll have 
text is white. We can do our padding with his like PX4 and PY2 rounded corners. We can do, if we want that hover state, we can do the same thing of um, hover, background, indigo, uh, dark. And we should be able to save that and see that we have this purple button now, which is awesome. Um, and then we can actually go and extract this out to our classes inside of our application CSS now. So we can have our button class, our button purple, and our button purple hover class. These will all receive an at apply onto them. And so um, that's going to add apply the other classes to it. So we'll write that in and then we'll just grab the classes for each one of these. So button purple is really just these two colors. Um, then our hover background indigo dark is just going to be moved to here. Um, we don't need the hover in this situation because our CSS takes care of it. And then our apply really just handles um, this. So we have those. And then for each of these, because we're in a CSS file now, we need to make sure that we do a period in front to denote that it's a class and not like an ID or something else. So if we do that, then we can go back here and add our button and button purple onto it. And that will work after it gets finished compiling and recompiles that file. Um, we should see that it's exactly the same, but this time we can fiddle with it and we can say, well, what if we accidentally left off the button class here? And you would see that it's still got the purple colors and hover state, but it doesn't have the full rounded corners and everything. So we know that it's created all of those classes um, when it compiled the CSS. So that's it for this episode. I really, really like Tailwind CSS. I think that it really speeds up my ability to prototype a UI and then lock it down later on when I extract those components out into something that's reusable. I think it's really, really handy to have. Um, and so that is it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace.